Marcia quits YouTube. Voice over Pete. Get banned from Fiverr. And Wall Street Journal is back at it again. I'm Poppy Harlow. And this is Pew News. Good evening. I'm Poppy Harlow, the most respected newswoman in the industry. <laughs> what you will find on this channel is nothing but the fact, and that's fact. That's a fact. Our first story comes from Pete, the voiceover man. Sorry, I may have gotten that wrong. Voice over Pete. Our first story comes from Voice Over Pete. Voice Over Pete recently got banned from Fiverr. That's right. Apparently, Fiverr is on a quest to just destroy their website completely and decided to ban Voice Over Pete. Now, if you don't know who Voice Over Pete is, he's an epic gamer, a huge meme stare, and an awesome voice person guy. We talk about the facts here. Now, he was featured in, in one of my videos. I mean, it's a popular meme. It's practically everywhere at this point. Attention, all nine-year-old gamers. <laughs> PewDiePie is in great danger. He needs your help to wipe out T-Series from YouTube once and for all. We must not let T-Series reach 69 million subscribers before he does. Now, voiceover Pete has clearly helped PewDiePie PewDiePie is my employer, so we need to help voiceover Pete back. Attention all TikTok fans. I understand you have a big question. Why do good girls like bad guys? All right, I have the answer. <laughs> but first, I need the 16 numbers on your credit card. Three friggin' numbers, <laughs> wacky numbers. On Probably voiceover Pete is most famous for the meme where he says, Attention all gamers! For us to win in this game, whether it's Counter-Strike or Fortnite, to reach the epic win royale, he needs your credit mom's credit card number. That's the joke. Three numbers on the back, the expiration month and date. But you gotta be quick so that Flusha can secure the frag and achieve the epic terrorist win. I can't Attention. believe how many there are. All Undertale gamers. Sans is in <laughs> great danger and he needs your help. To defeat Frisk and save the underground, he's going to need your credit card. <laughs> three numbers on the back and the expiration month and year. <laughs> Once again, Pew News and Meme Review are just two worlds colliding. <laughs> Now, Grande posted on Twitter saying, Attention all Epic Gamers. Fiverr just banned Voice of Repeat from their platform. He was one of the most wholesome people on their website. Why would they even ban him? We need to get him unbanned. Justice for Voice of Repeat. Voice of Repeat made a response and uh, it goes as follows. Adam needs your help. He needs to beat Zeus and win the WRB title. Fiverr banned you? Oh, come on. No, no, like, I, I don't know. Let's, let's, I mean, I don't know. Fiverr banned me. Do you have many orders I have in queue? How many orders do you have in queue? Uh, like 220 at least. Oh my God. Jesus. Uh, so apparently uh, he had 220 orders in queue. That's, you know, that's a lot of business for him, obviously. So he tries to log into his account and it shows that yes, he was indeed, dis his account was disabled. I mean, what a spit in the face for a website to just ban you without reaching out to you first. It's ridiculous. This is like, oh, you're you're banned. All your orders, ah, oh, they're gone. Dad, you're you're an icon in the gaming community. O M double G. <laughs> he writes though, Fiverr only refunded the payments of the pending orders onto our Fiverr balance instead of back to our credit card, so we can only use the money on Fiverr gigs. They didn't even refund the service fee. Service fee is two bucks, but still, it's like insult to injury. Well, wait, so service fees put aside. I mean, so if you paid voiceover repeat as a request, you don't get refunded if they ban him. You just have to spend it on something else on Fiverr. Do I got that right? That's so stupid. I called another manager out in California. They all said the same thing. Can't help you. I'm so sorry. Have a nice day. 
So he called his contacts on Fiverr and they basically said, yeah, we can't help you. I just love his reaction and positivity to all of this. And not just that he misses out on all these orders, all the money that he had on that account, it's gone, apparently. It's all gone. Did you have money in your account because it's gone? <laughs> so. How are you having a lot? Yeah, I don't get it either. If this happened to me, I'd be crying. Then later on, we see in an email the reason for the ban was the fact that he joked about getting credit card information. My credit card scam. Oh my gosh. But it was like a fake scam. You know, like it was clearly. To clearly. All, to all the gamers. Everyone knew it was like. It's a fake. It, that's what's funny about it. Hello. Yeah. Obviously, people in legal have no sense of humor. Pete is my dad. And I wanted to make this video because I think that this is actually the perfect time for him to pivot from Fiverr to Patreon as the best way for him to fulfill your orders with those dank memes. I get to work with the community, gaming community directly. So hey, Epic Games, call me. Bethesda, I'm available. Microsoft, let's rock Master Chief. Now, I gotta keep feeding all your dank memes. So we can get that sick W and nay nay on the noobs. Thank you. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Peace. This is why gamers need to rise up. This is why gamers is the most oppressed group on the internet. I've been saying this for a couple days, at least. So if you want to place an order with voice of repeat, I'm going to link his Patreon in the description. Uh, it seems like he's already doing really well for himself, so I think that's pretty inspiring. I love how he took this whole thing with a stride and, uh, and turned it into something more positive. Epic gamer moment, to say the least. Next, I mean, next news story. Popular YouTube host accuses Wall Street Journal of cancelling over $26,000 in donation funds. Wall Street Journal! Back at it again. This was in regards with their late night live stream, the Ralph Retort Kill Stream. They get about 8,000 viewers. A lot of times they bring in very controversial guests like Richard Spencer, and they bring them on to debate extremist views. I think, okay? I haven't watched any of these, and now the channel is gone, so I can't really say, but this is what I've gathered. The whole idea is that it's free speech and you, sh you should be allowed to debate these things. That's what I've gathered! <laughs> what I do know is that they are more than just those type of things. They do do positive things, like they helped break some of the news uh, with the BetterHelp drama. They helped, they're, they were the ones that figured out that YouTubers were paid $200 uh, per sign up, which was a key part of that whole story. Now, putting uh, the Ralph Retort on the side for a minute, just so we can talk about YouTube Super Chat. Now, YouTube Super Chat is something that's been on the fire by the media for quite a while now. BuzzFeed News posted in 17th of May a while ago how YouTube Super Chat system is pushing video creators towards more extreme content. For those of you who don't know, Super Chat is a way to donate during a live stream, so a text appears on the live stream to support the creator and giving them a message for the whole live stream. Now, some people take to this feature and put out offensive, heinous shit. That's the only way I can put it. Things saying like, white pride worldwide while donating $100. Now, YouTube's response to, to this after this article was that they reviewed these live streams. This was not the Ralph Retour, there was another live stream. This is a common concept. I think not just on YouTube, but on Twitch itself, where people write offensive things as a kind of a joke to get donations. And YouTube said, we carefully reviewed the live streams that were provided by BuzzFeed and found that the content does not meet our threshold for hate speech. However, we found that the comments shared in Super Chat do. So basically, the live stream themselves weren't bad, but the, the comments were. Then, a few weeks later, we find out that YouTube changed the system so that if a user is caught sending Super Chats, the revenue received will be donated to a charity instead of being split between YouTube and the channel's creator. Now, a lot of people were upset about this, saying, why should I have to suffer because someone wrote an offensive message? But the problem with this is that YouTube takes 30% of the Super Chats. So it's their service. And if they get caught taking money from these type of messages, it doesn't look good for YouTube. So in a way, I feel like this is a valid response. 
they clearly have already some system in place so that people can't make these donations to begin with but somehow they slip through and that's kind of part of the game with these donations is what kind of message can we put up there that passes through the system you know where have we heard that someone pulled that joke before i have no idea why would anyone try and test a system of what's the most offensive thing you could put out there just for the sake of comedy i mean how could anyone sing so <laughs> Now, a lot of this stems from a report that I reported on, I mean, did I? Yeah, a few weeks ago on Punis. I don't know if you guys remember this Data Society Alternative Influence Report uh, that basically grouped in everyone that's ever collabed uh, together on YouTube. Unironically drawing lines that weren't even correct as well. Trying to pin it, this is how the right wing extremists work on, uh, operate on YouTube because they collaborate, that's right. They make debates, everybody. I know, it's pretty shocking. And the response from the media of this was, YouTube's alternative influence network breeds right-wing radicalization report finds. What? <laughs> Which is clearly just false. I mean, I don't know where, how this report proves this, because it clearly didn't. Now, a lot of these messages, they're offensive. They're, they are made to be shocking. And the donation is a way to kind of justify it. I, I mean, this is just me explaining it to an adult that doesn't understand, or someone that doesn't understand the internet, I would say, or the, the culture on the internet. However, some donations probably are real. I mean, I can't say that every single offensive donation isn't inherently racist. They could be. Like I said, if YouTube takes 30% of that, either way, it doesn't look good for them. They won't avoid an apocalypse. Which is ironic because Super Chat seemed like the thing that could help creators from the ad apocalypse as an alternative way to earn revenue. And here we are again, everybody. Now, back to the Ralph retort. Uh, like I said, I don't know much about it. I know they have extremist people on there. I know they debate pretty insane things. But I also know that they do good things as well. They did this uh, charity live stream where they raised $26,000 for St. Jude's Hospital, which is to help kids with cancer. So, you know, it's something positive at least. But the problem with this is that with Super Chats, you don't get paid immediately from YouTube. I think it takes about a month or so. So in between uh, all this happening, Wall Street Journal was peeking around to write a story about this whole thing. Voila, about a month later, it appeared that everyone that donated to this live stream, the $26,000 that was made for charity, it was made for to help kids suffering with cancer, all the donations were cancelled. They were not donated away, like YouTube said. They were just put back, basically saying, we don't want them. And then, following that, the article came out from Wall Street Journal saying, hate speech on live super chat tests YouTube. Which is, uh, well, true to say the least. They talk about these offensive messages. And it also mentioned that St. Jude apparently arranged to return these donations in September. They added this feature in Super Chat where if offensive messages goes through, they would give it to charity. So now that they get offensive messages getting through for charity, they don't give the money that was supposed to go to charity for charity, they just delete it. They just say refund. Which, why? That makes no sense. Just take the money. St. Jude, take the money. It's eight weeks of chemotherapy for a child. Like put your politics aside just for a minute and say we don't agree with it, but there's something more important maybe. I don't know. It just baffles me that this is the response to just refund the donations. However, I don't know if it's just the donations that were offensive or if it was the donations, all of the donations, like all the $26,000 was every single message offensive, I doubt it. If that was the case, like why would they refund all of it? Just refund the ones that were offensive then. It shouldn't be that hard to figure out. You can just go through the live stream. It will take you two hours. Ridiculous. This also resulted into Ralph's Retort's channel getting removed, which I hate because why? Again, why? If you ban someone, now I have no idea. Was it because people donated offensive stuff? Was it because something he said was wrong or a guest said was wrong? Why? What was the reason? Now, Super Chat, in my opinion, is a great tool. When I first tested it out, I was one of the first ones that got to try it. I thought this is a great way to actually get money for charity. But since YouTube takes 30% of it, it doesn't really make sense. And I know YouTube is working so that you can donate money directly towards a charity instead. 
And I think if that was the case that they have that feature, this would be a lot easier. And I think all of this essentially could have been avoided if they just use then Streamlabs, which is uh, similar. It works in a similar way as a Super Chat. Just use that instead and disable a Super Chat. I don't know if there's anyone in particular's fault. I don't think you. it's the kind of issue where you can just point at one person and go, it's your fault. Uh, it's a complicated issue, but ultimately, the result, money that was going to go for cancer research for kids, is gone. That, that's the end result of all of this, regardless whose fault that is. And that is uh, pretty baffling, to say the least. Now, what do you guys think of this? Always passing on the question to you guys. Next news. Marcia quits YouTube. Oh no. <laughs> that sounded so sarcastic. Marcia, PewDiePie's fiance. Is it fiance? What is it called? Fiance. She made a heartfelt video saying goodbye, YouTube. It was a roughly eight minute video talking about her story. She heard seven years on uh, on YouTube. It's a really great video. I'm going to link it in the description. You should definitely watch it. She explained not just why she was quitting, but more giving you an idea of how she got to this point but here's the problem with the internet unless you're extremely specific with the reason of why you're doing something like ridiculously obvious to people then the message will get blurred and it did it did get blurred because of this i i saw so many people coming up with rumors saying like is she pregnant is she doing this for this reason or that reason when if you watch the video, if you watch the nine minute, if you took the time to watch it, you would understand it. So to see a lot of people saying, why is a star quitting video platform? And The Verge had my favorite one saying that YouTuber Marcia calls it quits in a personal video about mental health. What? <laughs> It had nothing to do with mental health. They're also linking to their article about creator burnout crisis. YouTube has been in the midst of creator burnout crisis for years. And the platform continues to fail its creator, helping to find a healthy balance. Yes, this is an important issue. And I appreciate The Verge talking about it. But this is not the narrative right now, okay? You're clearly just pushing this your own narrative. I mean, that would piss me off, but I know Marcia didn't care. I do think it's very interesting. When was the last time someone announced that they were going to quit YouTube? Announcing that they're quitting, not announcing that they're quitting because uh, they got another opportunity or another job or anything like that, or announcing that they're quitting because um, their channel died or whatever. Just saying, all right, I appreciate what I got from this, but uh, I want to move on to something else. I think for a lot of people, it's just completely incomprehensible why you would quit YouTube. Uh, people see it as a surefire way to get fame and money, and that's all that matters. So how could you possibly quit YouTube? You know, it's what all the kids wants to be, YouTubers. But ultimately, life is more than YouTube. Life is more than that. And I think uh, while it's been a fun journey, I mean, I'm just trying to, I, I don't want to reiterate Marcia's points but I think it's been an amazing seven years and she wanted to take her own path and I'm proud of her for taking that step I think that takes a tremendous amount of courage I 100% support her I thought it was interesting when she told people uh other youtubers about quitting uh before the video came out so many had the reaction of oh I wish I could quit or oh I wish I could do that but it's just not so easy and it seems like a lot of YouTubers try to do a lot of different things, whether it's, you know, other business project, projects, music, TV, acting, all these different things. Ultimately, a lot of YouTubers fall short. And I, I don't know if it's only because of maybe they don't have the talent or if it's because, you know, you, you don't go in 100%. It's almost like you have to take the leap for it to work to go into something else. And I think a lot of YouTubers probably, I'm not saying Marcia is, but I think a lot of YouTubers probably feel trapped in just doing YouTube and maybe their heart just isn't in it. Okay, that was it for Pew News. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, smash like, consider becoming a person. And uh, hope you enjoyed. See you guys tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>